everyone, so I Instagrammed a picture of my bare canvas of my bare nails and a few of you asked on that photo if I could do a manicure routine video so I thought I would do one today and I've kind of touched briefly before on what I do with my nails when I did my pamper routine, whatever it's called video and that kind of showed the basics of what I do but I thought I would do one video just completely dedicated to like DIY at home manicure and Heads up, I'm not a nail manicurist, artist, I, this is all self-taught, I've been and got my nails done professionally once and that was for my prom back when I was 16 and I had a French paint put on, but aside from that I always just do my own nails, I've always kind of been into nails. I actually used to bite my nails really badly when I was younger and my auntie is a beautician and must have been in my very early teenage years when she handed me some of her kind of leftovers, a bit of a manicure set and from that moment on I stopped biting my nails and paid, I've always paid a lot of attention to them. Back in the day I used to do French manicure all the time and now I'm very much into kind of just a, a straight up just a colour. I do like to fuss around a bit and I tried nail wraps for the first time the other day. Today I'm going to do a full on 10 step at home manicure just with one colour. Before I get started I lay all of my tools out that I'm going to need and then I go into the bathroom and just wash my hands and that sounds a bit gross but the first step is to remove any gunk you've got from under your nails away. You know that's probably the grimmest step of them all but it's very important just to make sure you've got all gross anything that's caught behind your nails out. So I wash my hands just to loosen that and then just use one of my tools which is from a Kiss Nails that I got. It had that tool in and then another tool in and they're really really good for cuticle work and getting grime from under your nails and that kind of thing. So I think they were about £6.50 for the set but I use them every single time, they are worth every penny. So I just use that tool to get behind my nails. Then I get started on cuticles and I apply a gel cuticle remover. This is the Sally Hansen Maximum Strength one which I picked up when I was in America. However, they do a cuticle gel in the UK and it's yellow I think, comes in a yellow tube and I just apply that around the base of the nail, around the cuticle and I leave that for about five-ish minutes just to do its thing. Then I go back with my cuticle pusher backer tool which is the, from the kiss that is on the other side of that tool that I used earlier. So I use that and just push the cuticles back very very gently, not too hard and just kind of scrape off any excess that's got on the nail and is a bit gross. And that just gets rid of all of the cuticle that's grown over the nail since I last did it. And I do that probably once a week. I say I paint my nails about twice a week and I do that once a week just to make sure everything's all neat and tidy in the cuticle area. Then I go trundle to the bathroom again, wash my hands, towel dry them off, come back and then it's time for cutting, filing or both if you fancy. My nails were at an alright length so I didn't really need to cut them but if you do need to cut them that's when I tend to do them but I just file them down in one direction with the Leighton Denny crystal nail file which is awesome and I just do that and I like to file mine down into quite a square shape probably because it's the easiest thing and that's just naturally how my nails grow so I file them down and cut them if necessary. Next up I buff and this is a four way cuticle buffer that I picked up from Boots for around I think it was under £2, it's so 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 cheap and I only buff around once a month, if you do it too much your nails will get weak and that's just bad but if you do buff once a month it kind of renews the nail and gives it and it gives it like a clean surface for the nail polish to adhere to so hopefully your nail polish should stick around longer and I definitely find it does when I buff once a month so I take the side number two I think it is first and that's the, to get rid of all the ridges and that's kind of real abrasive side and I just go around and do that on all of the nails just buff very gently not too crazily and then I go back with the I think it's called three smooth nail. I go back with that surface and just kind of smooth it all down and then I wash my hands again and get rid of any nail dust which has flown everywhere which is very nice. After that all of your prep is really done. I've been reading the Wa Nails book which I really love and in that they say that the final step that you should do before you paint your nail is dehydrate the nail which sounds really fancy. All it means is to take a cotton pad soaked in nail polish remover and just pull it over the nail so it's almost like squeaking which is actually quite good if you hear a bit of a squeak it means your nail is dead clean there's nothing left on it and it's perfectly clean for the next layer of polish to adhere to and the next layer of polish that I do is a base coat and for that I use OPI Nail Envy I've been using that for 
probably almost a year now, I think it has been about a year, a very long time and I'm still going strong with that pot, I have to really dig down into the deeper depths of it now but I just take a layer of that all over the nails, I find that it's a decent enough base coat and it helps to strengthen my nails too. Then for colour, I thought I would show you a few colours which I've been liking at the moment before I go and decide which one to choose and I really like the Chanel Frenzy Nail Polish. I'm into kind of pastels but like muted pastels and this is a very nice milky beige colour. You need probably about three coats of this and it's probably not the longest lasting polish out there but the colour is lovely. Then this one is new from Bourjois and it's their Ultra Shine So Lac and it's in the shade Fashion Gris Gris. I think this is really pretty. It's very similar to the colour I'm actually going to use. It falls into that greygy, heathery, purpley, lilac-y grey trend very nicely. Then the next two are Essie, surprise, surprise. The first one is Mushy Mushy. I love the name. It's such a cute, pastel-y pink, but it's not too opaque and not too sheer. And then probably my favourite green of all is Essie Absolutely Sure. You can't get this from the Diffusion Lizer, it's not in Boots and Superdrug, but you can get it online. So it means it has one of the old style brushes, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but it is a stunning colour. And then the one I decided to go for is Essie Merino Cool, which is the one that's very similar to the Bourjois shade. I love the shade and I went for it, number one because I thought it was quite dark but not a red so it would be good for you guys to see on camera, but also because SC Diffusion Line brushes are just the best brushes out there, they're nice and kind of straight on the end, they're not too thin, you can do your little finger in just one swipe, so I thought it would make this video a bit easier to film, I'm making life a bit easier for myself, but I just go on and put one layer of that on and I try not to get down too deep into the cuticle because that's when the cuticle can flood and it can all start to look a bit messy. It also makes it so much easier when you go to take your nail polish off if you haven't got it all in the skin surrounding your nail. So I go and do one coat of that, then leave it kind of 10-ish minutes or say, go watch the latest Lisa Eldridge video, then come back, go on with a second coat. And with my second coat, I'm a bit more slapdash. I try to do the first coat really precisely and get the shape exactly right. And then with the second coat, I just go over where there's any smudges or I haven't applied it particularly evenly and it just needs evening out of it. Then for top coat and I've been using the Leighton Denny one and I do love 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 Seche V but the list of health warnings that come with it is possibly as long as my makeup wish list. So I've been trying to stay clear of that one as much as I do love it recently and the Leighton Denny does a good job. It doesn't dry as fast but it has a very similar like glass like finish when it's all done. So I just put on a layer of that on all of the nails then Finally, to finish it off, I slick a bit of cuticle oil on and this is the Essie Cuticle Pen and I just find that after all that dehydration of the nail and all the different bits and bobs that you've done, it's nice to put a bit of nourishment back in your nails. So I hope you like that, that's just what I do every time I fancy painting my nails, about twice a week I do it and it might seem a bit long and laborious here with all the different sets but you can quite easily fit this into an episode of Come Dine With Me once you get used to it. So I hope you like that one, hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.